This is the 415ers podcast coming at you three times a week on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network. We appreciate you tuning in. Evan Giddings, Mark Grandy with you as always. Download, rate, and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends. I mean, I don't know. Give them a free subscription for Christmas upcoming. I don't know <laughs> if you can even do that, but wrap it up, put it in an e-box, and send it out. Okay, I, I am actually, I'm also glad that you brought this up, which is another reason why I do think that if Jimmy Garoppolo has the chance to come back, that it, look, I, I would, I'm not a head coach, but I would personally do that because, and, and it, I, I hate to make it sound, which is what a lot of the conversation has been and where I want to go next, Mark, surrounding your two young quarterbacks not named Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm. But, you know, you, you brought up the, comments and sort of emotions swirling around the 49ers locker room after Jimmy got hurt. I don't think it was similar to how the locker room looked, sounded, reportedly was feeling after Trey Lance was ruled out with a season ending foot injury or, you know, broke his, broke his ankle, broke his foot. Like, I don't think the conversation was as similar. Now that may be unfair to Trey Lance, but it's a reality that we have to face. This team clearly, because of who Jimmy Garoppolo is, the way that he's been since he's joined the San Francisco 49ers, uh, the way the experience he's had on the field, they feel more confident with him under center. And I do believe the team would, by extension, feel more confident even if Jimmy Garoppolo is coming off of, you know, a non-foot surgery but a foot injury later in the playoffs. Then with a rookie seventh round, Mr. Relevant quarterback like that, that to me is also a reality that has to be faced by the coaching staff and by the 49ers. And it, and it's also, again, I, it, it sounds like it's damning to Trey Lance, but I do think Mark, it's been interesting to see how people have reacted to the immediate ascension of Brock Purdy and the way he played against the Miami Dolphins almost to the point where people are, are are jumping forward into next year saying, hey, there might be a real quarterback competition here between, you know, between Brock Purdy and Trey Lance. Like I have, I, I think I said a few weeks ago that, that Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, is probably, I, I think there's a good chance that he's back next year. That certainly changes with the injury, but I almost think it, it's maybe helped in a way. Uh, we can, we can have that conversation if you want. But I do think that Trey Lance is still in line to be the starter, no matter how Brock Purdy fares the rest of the season. Probably. I do think there's a very real possibility that there's another open competition next next preseason. To me, that competition, though, would be between Garoppolo and Lance. Like, Purdy doesn't, to me, doesn't factor into that equation. If, if, If Garoppolo is a niner... Again, next year, I think he's coming into the season as the starting quarterback. Uh, if they don't have Garoppolo, maybe they bring in a different veteran. Then I think it's an open competition. But if Jimmy Garoppolo, in, in my opinion, is coming back next season, I'm not sure there's an open competition. Now, maybe Trey Lance can just have the best offseason anyone has ever had, and he kind of forces himself into that conversation. Uh, but I think if, if Jimmy Garoppolo is back, uh, then it's clear the Niners wanted him back because he's not under contract next year. He's a free agent. Uh, they would be, you know, forcing themselves to get even more creative with the cap, which again can be done. Uh, the Rams have done it for years now. The Niners have been doing it as well, maybe not to the extent as some other teams, including the Rams, but they have been doing it. If the Niners, you know, have Jimmy Garoppolo under contract again next year, and that includes the offseason and the preseason. I think he's their guy. Um, But I also think it was pretty obvious. You mentioned kind of the emotions feeling a little different um, after the Garoppolo injury versus the Lance injury. I also think you could kind of hear and feel positive vibes from the Niners players talking about Brock Purdy. Now, of course, they're they're not going to throw him under the bus. They're not going to say, yeah, season's over. We don't have a chance. But they also went out of their way to speak positive on Brock Purdy. I don't know if you heard uh, Brendan Ayuk's appearance on the Aaron It Out podcast with TJ Hushmanzada in Orlando, did, Scantric, yeah. a couple of NFL veterans. Uh, Brendan Ayuk 
just a random appearance, not Niners promoted, not at a Niners podium, nothing that Niners are, you know, sitting there, a PR guy sitting right next to Ayuk, making sure he, he watches what he says. Brandon Ayuk came out and said, Brock Purdy, like, I'm riding with BP. He said, uh, Purdy came up to him after the game and kind of said, hey, I'm sorry I missed you on a couple of plays against the Dolphins. I'll get better and I'll feed you. That's what Ayuk said that Purdy said to him. Like, that's not something that a veteran receiver like Ayuk needs to come out and say. And that's probably relatively rare for a seventh round rookie to come out and say to a veteran wide receiver as well. So while I think there's probably a, a difference in terms of emotional connection between Niners and Garoppolo and Niners and Lance, it's also, I think, relatively clear to see that the Niners players right now, as it stands, maybe things change if, if he plays poorly for a long stretch, but it's pretty clear to see that, that they also are kind of emotionally invested already in Brock Purdy. One, Brendan Ayuk is 24 years old. Uh, I know it is year. his third third year in the league. I mean, he's he's a he's a part of the core. Yeah, he's he's part of the core. I wouldn't go so far as to call him a veteran, but I get like, and and this is the way I think a lot of fans feel. What else do you have? Like, and and I know you, you kind of you preface your comments by saying, well, what else, what else are you supposed to do? But and Ayuk goes out of his way. To me, that's also a response to a lot of the quarterback conversation around Brock Purdy. I mean, not just them bringing in jo Josh Johnson. They officially signed him um, on, on, yes, they, they have, they brought in a veteran quarterback, but it's in response to rumors about, you know, Baker Mayfield, who we'll get to in a bit, who officially signed in, in Los Angeles. Uh, I think it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a comment surrounding some of the conversation of, well, what do you make of, you know, a, a rookie last pick quarterback. And even though it is unprovoked, I think that if Trey Lance was in the same situation, I think we'd be, we'd be hearing the same thing. I, I look, look, I also believe that because of the expectation of Brock Purdy, as opposed to the expectation of Trey Lance, that are freaking wowed by Brock Purdy. They're like, oh my God, who is this seventh round pick that could step into a game, throw it 37 times, and win a ball game? They're like, that, that, I, I've never seen that before because literally it has never happened before. Mr. Irrelevant has never thrown a pass in the NFL, nonetheless, won a game. So I do think there is a, a expectation from the bottom up saying, when Jimmy goes out, you know, half the stadium, if not more, is saying, wow, there goes the season. Maybe the sum of the sidelines saying, wow, there goes the season. But then enter Brock Purdy, who, to his credit, was clearly prepared and clearly ready for the moment against a Miami team that at the time was winning the football game. And, get you know, by his own play, sort of galvanizing this group against the Dolphins. And they're saying, oh, my God, like, we might we might have found lightning in a bottle. That's, to me, where the comic comes from, as opposed to if Trey Lance is in that same spot, there's there's not as much wow because he's the number three overall pick or you know third taken quarterback that you traded three first round picks to get. That is expected of Trey Lance. What Brock Purdy did was not expected. And that's why I think we're seeing, including Brandon Ayuk, a lot of people on the team, around the team, fans, media come to Brock Purdy's defense and saying, hey, we might have found something here as opposed to Trey Lance, which which you're looking at like, nah, I I I, I should expect that from my my former first round pick, right? Yeah, no, that's a good point. I, I think expectations certainly factor in here. I also think in general, the whole, I don't know, this whole conversation about Brock Purdy and and now there are, you know, a, a number of people, and I'm not I'm not even talking about players. I, I'm talking more about I guess some media, maybe maybe bloggers is the better way to put it, uh, fans, a lot of people on Twitter. The whole conversation around Brock Purdy, and this is nothing against Brock Purdy, I'm just trying to put myself in Trey Lance's shoes. And to me, frankly, it's it's pretty upsetting and, and frustrating. Like the, the way that the fan base and a lot of people 
and again, this is not a blanket statement. There's there's plenty of people that I, I think feel the same way as I do. I'm not sure we ever saw, and I think a big part of it is, is what you're talking about in terms of expectations, a third overall pick versus a Mr. Irrelevant. You expect the world from Trey Lance, and frankly, you expect nothing from Brock Purdy because that's where they were drafted. But the, the way that the fan base and a lot of people have just so quickly embraced Brock Purdy versus how they reacted to the first start of Trey Lance's career last year and how they reacted to his first start in a monsoon in Chicago uh, and how they reacted when he went down with a broken ankle thinking, okay, now we've got a better chance to win because we've got Jimmy Garoppolo. Like Whether that's true or not, I'm just trying to, to think about this from Trey Lance's perspective. And it frustrates me because you kind of see how this, this fan base is kind of maybe written him off isn't the right phrase, but how they never quite embraced him the same way that they've embraced Brock Purdy now after he's come, came in and, and, and mop up duty of an injured Jimmy Garoppolo and, and played well and helped win a game. I'm not denying any of that. And again, this is nothing negative against Brock Purdy, just comparing situations. And it's a little frustrating because you, you kind of get the feeling. And I, I know it's a business and, you know, football isn't about what's right and what's wrong. But you kind of get the feeling that up to this point, Trey Lance just hasn't gotten a fair shake. And a big part of that is because of his injury. But I, I can't really shake the feeling that Trey Lance hasn't been treated totally fair up to this point in his career. And look, I, I'll, I'll give Trey Lance credit. He appeared to be on the sideline with, with Brock Purdy during the Miami Dolphins game. It was trying to do, I'm assuming, everything he can to help Brock Purdy succeed and help the 49ers win. But I'm with you. Like, it, it would piss me off. I mean, the way that people have just welcomed Brock Purdy into yeah. the fold like he's going to be the next Tom Brady. Like, he's a late-round pick and is all of a sudden going to step in for the starting quarterback and lead this team to a Super Bowl. That would piss me off, too. And, look, I know most of it is predicated not on Brock Purdy, but also on the defense that we saw against the number 2 offense the running game that appears to be coming into form and not really skipping much of a beat despite not having Elijah Mitchell. I think a lot of people just feel like, hey, Brock Purdy is Jimmy Garoppolo, but without the without the resume. Like like he he we yeah. we can see the floor of him, but we don't know, we don't have the answer to the question of whether or not he can get us over the over the hump. That was the feeling that I got from a lot of fans on Sunday um, and just kind of scouring social media, fair or foul. As far as Trey Lance, like, and another part of it too, which which may be unfair to him, is unfortunately the few moments that we've got to see him on the field haven't been his best. I mean, just, just simply put. And you could say it's unfair of him to, you know, perform well in a monsoon, but, I mean, the Bears are... Three and nine, three and ten. Like that's that, that's not a good look. And unfortunately, the one big win he did have last year, which I want to give him credit for, the Houston Texans was a game that the Niners needed to have in order to make the playoffs. But and again, it was also the Houston Texans, and that's a team that you should be able to beat. Again, it comes back to expectation for me because Brock Purdy is not expected to beat the Miami Dolphins. The 49ers, after losing their starting quarterback, are not expected to beat the Miami Dolphins. And they largely didn't skip a beat when Jimmy Garoppolo left and then when Brock Purdy came in. I mean, if you just look at his stat line, 25 at 37, 210, two touchdowns a pick, that's a very Jimmy Garoppolo-esque stat line. And it's one that also, coincidentally, ended in a win. That tell, like, I think that gives fans a lot of confidence in that this guy can be Jimmy Garoppolo, but also we don't know if he can be better than Jimmy, so we're just going to ride with him. Yeah. It's, I mean, we've talked about it a lot, how, uh, I mean, we talked about it before the season even started, how weird this season, off season was, the quarterback situation is, and every week just, it takes a another turn. And I, I have a feeling that there's more turns left in this story. I think, you know, what the Niners have shown you, maybe not told you, but what they've shown you in their actions over the last few days and I know it's what we'll talk about coming up in a little bit with Baker Mayfield is they feel pretty comfortable 
with Brock Purdy. That's what Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch are telling you. They signed Josh Johnson. That's it. Josh Johnson, a career backup who's played some NFL football, but not much. He's been on, what, 14 different teams now? Something like that. third stint with the Niners. I think it might be fourth. It, I, it might be the fourth Whatever stint, it but it's a lot. three or an four. Lot. Yeah. Regardless, it's an awful lot of stints with the San Francisco 49ers. But with, with the moves or the, the non-moves the Niners are making, Evan, they are telling you whether or not it's fair or not. If it if it might upset Trey Lance, if it if it frustrates him, they're telling you that they are content, I think at the least, content with uh with Brock Purdy and what he can do leading this team. I'm with you. I'm with you.